You guys are not going to believe how many players were ejected after some of these NBA fights. What's going on everybody? Today we're talking about some of the craziest fights in NBA history. I'm sure most of you are familiar with quite a few brawls that have reached the big headlines, but these are actually some that happened a long time ago and you may have forgotten about them. Some of these brawls resulted in massive suspensions, an entire court being ejected, and even players throwing punches just a few feet in front of the NBA commissioner himself. We'll start off the list with a fight between two legendary NBA players in Larry Bird and Julius Irving, otherwise known as Dr. J. The day was November 9th, 1984, with the Boston Celtics locked into a close game against the Philadelphia 76ers. Irving was pretty much having a game to forget here. He was the main star of his team, but he only had 6 points in 23 total minutes. Meanwhile, his matchup, Larry Bird, was playing out of his mind, scoring 42 points in just 30 minutes of action. It was at this point that Irving was getting pretty frustrated, and he ended up taking that anger out on Bird when he randomly backed into him while running to get on defense, and Bird fell to the ground. Bird quickly got up in an effort to swing back or shove Irving, but was quickly met by a few other players such as Moses Malone and Charles Barkley. But here's the thing, both of those players were members of the 76ers at the time, and them holding Bird back wasn't an effort to stop the fight, instead it was so Irving could land a few punches on him. This back and forth resulted in a wild brawl between the two teams, with multiple players hitting the floor and somebody even grabbing another player in a headlock. Then, after the teams were finally starting to get separated, two bench players suddenly connected with a few punches on one another, and that got the crowd all riled up once again, and the officials had to try and get those guys split up. Even the announcers couldn't explain what was happening here. There were so many punches being thrown and bodies flying all around that you just couldn't see who was hitting who. Unlike in this next fight between the Chicago Bulls and the New York Knicks during the 1994 Eastern Conference semifinals. It was Game 3, and the two teams were already giving the game their all and playing with such intensity that it just felt like a fight was bound to break loose at some point. A play had just ended on one side of the court, and the cameras were on Horace Grant while the announcers mentioned him during the play, but randomly he just started sprinting off into the middle of the court. The cameras quickly positioned to see what was going on, only to see Derek Harper and Jojo English latched onto one another and pushing each other. The two players actually started drifting into the front few rows of fans when Harper flipped English onto the ground. From up above, it looked like a few haymakers were being thrown at one another down under the pile, but there were so many other teammates and staff that were jumping onto the pile to separate the two that you really just couldn't see what was happening anymore. Meanwhile, all the fans in the first few rows were trying desperately to get out of the way to avoid getting knocked out by a stray punch. Chairs were being tossed, teammates were getting pushed, side skirmishes were breaking loose. It was just an all-around crazy moment in the series that probably wouldn't have been that bad had Harper not flipped English onto the floor. Shockingly, the security guards that were pulling people off the pile were more interested in grabbing John Starks. Starks wasn't even throwing punches, in fact, he was just trying to break them up. But he was thrown in the middle of the pile and into the first few rows just like some of the other players involved. But you want to know the craziest part of all of this? This brawl took place just a few feet away from the former NBA commissioner David Stern, who was still the commissioner at this point in time. So if there was ever a time you wanted to get yourself suspended from the league for a few games, a good way to do it might be to get into an all-out brawl in the middle of the court, body slamming someone and falling into the stands, and doing all of that right in front of the dude who controls all the punishments in the league. This next fight luckily wasn't in front of the commissioner, but it was so bad that there were more than five players ejected over it. During a regular season game between the New York Knicks and the Denver Nuggets back in 2006, the two teams got into an all-out brawl in the middle of the game. J.R. Smith was fouled pretty hard by Marty Collins, and he took offense to that foul. The two of them got into each other's faces and started yelling at one another before sending over a few shoves. At first, it just seemed like your normal NBA scuffle, until Nate Robinson flew into the pile and gave Smith a hard shove when he wasn't looking. Smith was already pretty mad, so he took the opportunity to grab Robinson, and the two of them tumbled to the ground and into the first row of the stands. 
As is the case for many fights, you couldn't really see what was going on under this giant pile, but what the cameras were able to see was Carmelo Anthony land a nice clean punch on an opposing player before running away from the pile and out of harm's way. Officials and teammates, even other staff members, were doing everything they could to try and restore order to the court while the crowd was going wild over the fight. After things finally started to calm down, it raised the question of what was going to happen to Smith and Robinson. The refs got together and held a long discussion, reviewing everything that had just happened, along with how the entire incident started, and their final decision was actually shocking. They stepped out into the middle of the court and announced to the entire arena that all 10 players who were on the court playing at the time the first fight broke out were to be completely ejected from the ballgame. This could be one of the only times in NBA history that this has ever happened. And honestly, I still can't believe that it did. I mean, NBA teams only have about 12 active players every game, and if you suspend the starting five, you're only left with about five to seven bench players who normally don't even get any minutes. The thing is, that must have really sucked for the fans at the game who got their tickets thinking they were going to be able to watch Carmelo or Nate Robinson or even J.R. Smith. But hey, at least they can say that they witnessed one of the craziest fights and punishments in NBA history. I guess there's some positives in that, right? On the other hand, there were absolutely zero positives that came out of the fight between the Houston Rockets and the Los Angeles Lakers during the 1977 season. So during the game, there were two players who just kept jawing at one another until finally tempers boiled over. After a lot of trash talking and arguing, the two players decided to settle everything once and for all right in center court, where they started shoving and pushing each other. Now this immediately caught the attention of other players and officials and everyone started running over to get the two men separated to avoid any serious injury, only it happened anyways. Rudy Tomjanovic was one of the few players on the Rockets who tried to run to center court to separate the whole thing. He didn't want it to get any worse for the guys involved and just wanted to resume the basketball game. Kermit Washington was one of the players involved in the fight, and he was on the Lakers. So when he saw Tom Janovic come running out to the middle of the court, he thought he was about to get double teamed to the ground, and he wasn't about to let that happen. So he unleashed a scary punch that connected right to the head of Tom Janovic and sent him falling onto the floor. He was rushed off the court and spent quite a bit of time in the hospital over the next few weeks, facing injuries like a broken nose, broken jaw, fractured skull, and even leakage of spinal fluid. Once you realize all those things could have resulted in serious, even fatal injuries, you gotta be happy that he was able to make a recovery and continue to live out his life. Obviously though, he was never able to get himself back to the NBA player that he once was, though he did end up being one hell of a coach for the same team that he played for, the Houston Rockets. As the head coach, he led the franchise to two NBA championships and will forever be remembered for his contributions to the city of Houston in this basketball team. It's just a shame that we never got to see him play out the rest of his career after that injury that could have entirely been avoided. All it would have taken was for Washington and that other Rockets player to just calm down and understand their differences, and Tom Janovich wouldn't have ran out onto the court and he wouldn't have suffered any of those terrible injuries. Washington did face punishment from the league though, for obvious reasons, getting fined $10,000 and he was suspended for 60 days. After his suspension, he came back to the NBA and actually became an all-star for a short period of time before he faced a back injury that threw him into early retirement during the 1982 season. Kermit also went on to mention how lonely and threatened he felt after coming back to the NBA. He was traded to a different team and received constant death threats. He did say that he wishes it never would have happened and that he should have been mature enough to calm down and walk away. It doesn't make up for what happened, but at least he shows an understanding of regret. Want to watch some more videos about NBA fights? Make sure to click on the video that appears on your screen. Keep watching.